Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about should you buy or who should buy Dominia. Uh, it is a set that we have seen over half the cards, 140 out of the 245 cards. And surprisingly enough, I believe it's going to be fun to draft and it's going to be fun to buy the box just to open. Now, I have to talk about old boxes for you to understand what has happened. Since RTR uh, and Hour of Devastation, uh, up until Ixlon, the box prices have all been under distribution prices online. So the distribution price, the price the, your local game store would buy a box at is anywhere between 76 and 77, 78. So a local game store is trying to sell a box at $100. And they used to be able to do that. They cannot do that anymore. Uh, online, the com competition is too heavy. It is too aggressive. And everything is cheaper. And it comes pretty much next day. I will be honest, there's probably no actual reason to buy something from your, your local game store if your only concern is price. Your local game store is not going to be able to compete against the many, many huge, huge vendors online. So box prices have of recent sets have been very dismal, uh, even RTR. If you go all the way back, back to RTR, none of these boxes are over $100. They're not even close many times. You have Dragon Maze with discount under 60. You have Journey and Born of the Gods and Pharaohs under 70. You have a lot of boxes that should be valuable given the time, given how long the time has passed, being pretty much worthless in people's closets. Um, I see a lot of Craigslist posts about this dude who bought like 40 boxes of RTR, or most recently Battle for Zendikar, and now he's fire selling the boxes at $55. An important concept to understand is retail price of a box and what the box actually gets so sold for. So you could have so here you can see our devastation with discounts, free stuff and shipping probably is under $65 shipped to you. But cash flow becomes a big issue because even if you are the cheapest seller of our devastation, the price is continuing to go down on box prices. And maybe people don't even want our devastation. They don't even care that you're the cheapest because no one wants a set. Everyone wants a new set. A lot of local game stores and a lot of vendors now have money tied to something they cannot move. That creates a cash flow issue. So when your local store has a bunch of Hour of Devastation booster boxes, those booster boxes could be Core 2018, it could have been Dominia, it could have been Masters 25, I'm going to talk a little bit about right now, is a disaster, I hate it. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, the only saving grace of Masters 25 is that they unban Jace. If they didn't unban Jace, you're looking at a, you're looking at terrible mythics. Just yes, you have Imperial Recruiter. Yes, you have Chalice. But what else? You know what else, right? You got both of Chromas. You got a uh, Tree of Redemption. That's a famous one, but it's not even the Tree of Redemption. Yeah, it feels bad, but. If it was only one tree of redemption, we could be like, okay, cool. No, they know what they're doing. It's they created this lottery system, um, and the only winners of it would be people who open hundreds of boxes because the variance would be the same, or the variance you would eventually get close to the same amount of copies of each of these mythics. However, for a regular person, a tree of redemption on their one box is going to just uh, feel real bad. So I am excited for this new set, but historically no set since RTR has been able to hold value. That's just true. You look at all these sets, uh, Battle for Zendikar, I think is around 85 right now. Uh, Oath of the Gatewatch, which should have been good. And these sets, like on the surface, it would seem like, okay, we have four art lands, we have big bad Aldrazi's, and we have masterpieces. Yeah, it's going to be valuable. Except the cards in them are incredibly weak. So I think this 
set is as strong as RTR, and RTR was an incredibly strong set. You had Abrupt, you had Supreme Verdict, you had the five Shocklands. You had multiple cards still worth m lots of money today. Uh, you, uh, Psychonic Rift was reprinted into Oblivion, but still nonetheless a good card. Chromatic Lantern. You had 10 cards that you would be very happy to have even today. Here, I can see 10 cards. And that's unique from Aether Revolt. I don't see many cards, and I see Fatal Push, and that's a, pretty much it. You might say um, Heart of Kinren, but after the quadruple reprint and one command, one challenger deck, it's it's gone. You might say Chandra, but th she's gone. You might say Hazret, she's, she's gone. So a lot of these key cards in these sets are gone. And that's why you need 10 of them, because you don't know when they're going to print your Abrupt Decay, when they're going to ban your Death Rite Shaman. At least they have the five Shocklands, which everyone will be happy to pull from a booster pack, right? So it's a $10 card from a $3 booster pack. That makes sense to me. That's what you want to see. You want to see five rares. So I'm not, the Mythics are nice. I love that Mythic Angel. I think it's going to be um, a beautiful card, and I think it's going to be in high demand. And Planeswalkers are nice, but it's got to be the rares and the uncommons, and they look strong to me. Uh, I've been playing this game for a long time, and I know what sets are going to do well. I, a lot of you thought that Hour of Devastation would do well. I said it was the next Dragon Maze. Guess who was right? It's the next Dragon Maze. As soon as they reprint Scarab God and something, woo, you're going to see it's going to be just very bad. Uh, very, very bad. The expected value on these boxes are just dismal. Um, unless you hit, and even like, even if you hit like a masterpiece from our or Amarket, you need to hit the right one. So it's not even good to be lucky. You have to be super lucky. But the reason that this set is going to have good value uh, is due to power level. People. People like cards that are powerful. People like cards that they know will have value afterwards. If you take RTR, Jay's Frasca both got reprinted. Uh, Psychonic Rift got reprinted. The Death Rite Shaman got reprinted, and he's still banned in modern. Abrupt Decay got reprinted. The Five Shocklands have not yet. Chromatic has not yet. But just on the top of my head, those are some of the more valuable cards today that still have value. I can see about 20 of these cards that out of the half that I could look at and say, yeah, okay, this Mythic will be around. This Mythic Angel is going to be valuable. Even if reprinted somehow, it's still going to be a great commander. This Uncommon's playable in modern possibly. It comes down to power level. What they've been doing has been very strange. They've been printing lots of weak cards. And in a vacuum, these weak cards seem kind of good and standard. But none of them make it out to modern. So when you talk about... Let's talk about the recently rotated stuff. Um, Liliana of the Last Hope. That's an interesting one. Uh, I'm Fingers crossed that she's not reprinted anytime soon. But she's an interesting one. But outside of that, even Startled Awake, I think a Startled Awake foil is five bucks right now on Star City Games on sale. None of these cards are like worth money, like like literally none of them. And it is both fascinating that they chose to make cards that are, they know are, are very weak. And it's fascinating that so many YouTubers are promoting these cards they should know are weak. I either think that they don't play this game or don't have like a historical reference or they're just trying to promote the product. So you're getting sold. I mean, I remember Battle for Zendikar, how hyped that set was. Expeditions, full art lands, possibly in foil. Gideon, one of the strongest planeswalkers ever. And he was he, in standard, but uh, the criteria for modern is very different. So, not not the best. I remember like how hyped people were and how excited and how much um, the people were trying to buy cases of the set. I have friends who buy packs. They just buy packs 
and they started buying cases. Uh, there was a person I met, his name was Steven, and he had several, maybe 10 cases of it, and we were just opening and opening and opening and opening and until I just didn't record anymore because it was just too much. And you can see some of the videos on this channel. But overall, like it was probably some of the most uh, fascinating yet epically... Yeah, it is quite, it's difficult for me to say to invest in any set. I don't think that I will ever say that again, but this set will be fun and opening a box or even a case is going to be worth it to you as an entertainment value. Uh, to give you a little bit of background about like how expensive, like people should not get into magic, especially in standard, especially today, based on the expectation that they want to make money that is unrealistic and you're only going to feel angry about it once you don't make money. It is very difficult to make money from Magic the Gathering. It is difficult to be a content creator because you have much less, it's not League of Legends where it's millions of players. It's like hundreds of thousands, I guess. And you are not even an E-list celebrity most times. <laughs> Uh, I, I will speak from personal experience. I'd rather not be noticed when I play Magic because it's just kind of creepy. So it's not like, oh, you went to a anime convention and people are complimenting you on how awesome your anime costume is. No, it's not like that at all. <laughs> They're not complimenting you. Uh, anyway, uh, back to my point in the set. I truly believe that given that we know that Challenger deck eventually will come reprinting into oblivion some of the valuable cards in the set. No recent set, uh, no future set of Magic will ever be worth investing in. You will not want to buy boxes of this or any other set, including the Masters 25, and just store it in your closet one day and hope it goes up in price. The belief... Uh, the the reason that people want you to believe this is because they want to sell you boxes. Uh, it's it's quite simple. Uh, it's you know personal greed and personal. I saw a box. Um, I think I was on Rudy's channel or not Alpha Investments channel, and it was o Open Boosters. He opened a a tournament pack of Beta, I believe, and there wasn't even rares in it. So he paid some obscene amount, over five figures, to open something that had maybe $200 of value. Maybe $250 if you grade it, right? Maybe $500 if you grade it. But then you have to subtract grading costs, shipping costs, things of that nature. It has always been the, the dream of the Magic player to open a box and make money from it. It's not possible with the current sets. You have to get double retail to break even. Even then, depending on how you sell it, let's say you sell it from local game store, your local game store is probably not going to give you 50%. When I would, my local game store, DNA Comics, gave you 15 to 20% on a good day, 10% on a bad day. So you would have to open, you know, like a thousand dollars of cards to get your hundred dollars back. That's just how they operated, right? Um, now, I can talk about them right now because at the end of the day, they don't do magic anymore. Uh, so they don't have magic F&M. They're they happier. They're more profitable. Uh, they cut magic out completely. I mean, they're singles. Like when you go to your store and you look at the singles, it's truly, truly quite terrible. Uh, just you could tell that like, w you can tell exactly when they um, stopped. And it is, uh, it's quite interesting. Like, I'm not going to lie and say that, you know, it is just super interesting what happened. Uh, anyway, that is it. Uh, leave me a comment below if you guys are going to buy the set. How much of this set are you going to buy? Bye, guys.